Alright, so here's a quick video on my new little buddies. Uh, this is a Spanish ribbed newt. To be more specific, he's a leucistic Spanish ribbed newt. Um, I have two of them in here. The other one's somewhere around here. Uh, he or she will pop up soon enough. Oh, speaking of the devil. Um, they're also known as the uh, sharp rib newts or Iberian rib newts. The scientific name is uh, Pleurodiles waltel. I probably completely butchered that, but I am not very good at Latin. Uh, they're endemic to central and southern Iberian, Pen ah, Iberian Peninsula and Morocco. Um, they're the largest newt in, uh, in Europe. And they're mostly known for, as you can barely see, see along the ribs, they're kind of pokey. They have these, um, these ribs, they're able to actually break and push through their skin to penetrate anything trying to bite down on them. And it releases a venomous toxin, um, which will kill or at least uh, really get the whatever's biting it to let go. Um, they're actually called tubercles, which reach down each length. You can just see them along there. Those are the tubercles that go down each side of them. Um, these ones are still emps, which means they're young, uh, little youngins. In the wild, they can actually grow up to a foot long, but in captive, they're generally only about uh, up to eight inches. These guys are probably four or five inches, I'd say. Um, they're still a bit too young to sex. I tried my best because I wanted to get one male and one female. Uh, the males t t ah, tend to be slimmer and have um, longer tails while the females will be uh, a little chubbier because they hold the eggs and they tend to uh, have actually shorter tails. They're, um, they tend to do good around 7.0 pH but they can stretch uh, 6.5 to 7.5. Um, they like cooler water, so definitely don't have a heater in there. Um, they're good about 60 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit, but can still do well at about 72. Um, you also want to watch out for things like copper, ammonia, and um, any other chemicals, because like most other amphibians, they kind of breathe through their skin so they absorb everything in the water so they can be you know any kind of toxin in there can really mess with them and um, make sure you put them in an established tank I decided to change my hospital tank from fish into these for into a house for these guys I kept in the, um, the sponge filter that's fully cycled as well as all the plant matter and driftwood but I keep it bare bottom because it's easiest to clean and they have really sensitive uh, skin on the bottom side of them as well as all over them but um, you don't want to have like you know sharp kind of gravel or anything that's going to tear up their bellies as well as you don't want to have any small gravel that they can swallow because when they're eating things they kind of suck everything in and you don't want them to choke on that or get it stuck in them these kind of newts, um, they're actually um, uh, almost completely aquatic. Um, I'm going to put in some cork, floating cork bark so they can hop on it or rest against it if they need to. But they have really spend almost their entire lives completely uh, submerged in water. So you want to have it more of a fish tank. You don't want to have it like fire belly newts and stuff spend a huge part of their life outside of the water and just need to be in damp areas. These guys are very different. They um, they basically spend the whole time in, in water. To uh, get them to breed, um, it's pretty easy and documented quite well in captivity where it's as simple as even sometimes just doing a water change where the water is slightly cooler and it'll trigger them to uh, begin mating. And you want to keep a ton of moss in here because not only do they like to hang out in it and feel safe in it, but once they do mate, they're going to lay their eggs against the moss. 
Um, they have they can swim pretty well. They keep their tail is almost sort of a rudder shaped. Uh, they have kind of a fine line along it and can use it as a bit of a, a little propeller. Um, these ones are just the leucistic ones. The regular Spanish rib newts are actually like dark grayish, brownish, and have spots on their sides where it starts to lighten up. Um, and yeah, that's I'm pretty sure just about it. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, let me know below. Um, they actually feed a lot on insects and um, blood worms work well, live worms, uh, tadpoles. In nature, they eat mostly tadpoles, insects, and worms. But um, once, if you get them young enough about this age, you can actually get them to start eating pellets, like Zoomed, new pellets, or any other kind of pellets that are a very high percentage of uh, protein. They love to have, they need a lot of protein. But you can really get them to start eating pellets as long as you get them while they're young and can kind of, you know, get them on there. Otherwise, just feed them live things like bugs and uh, worms. Sometimes you can put crickets up on floating plants and they'll snag them down. Yeah, um, that's about it. Uh, if you like this, please like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. And one last thing also that I just remembered. I'm keeping these in um, an eight gallon tank at the moment, but it recommend everybody recommends that you keep them in at least a 10 gallon especially when they get larger for little imps like this they can do all right here but you want a 10 gallon or larger especially they're good to be kept in groups you can keep uh, 8 to 10 of them as long as you have a big enough tank but you want to gauge that on you'll see when they're in there if they look crowded you're gonna want to get them something bigger but at least a 10 gallon for adults and if you're gonna have a large group a lot more but yeah thanks hope you enjoyed and one last bonus fact, sorry for button back in, but I also remembered that I forgot to mention uh, I'm using the sponge filter. I might actually either lower the amount of air going through it or bring it up to the surface because these guys do not like any current at all. They like really still water. So if you have a sponge filter that's ideal, you don't want to hang on the back that's going to flush everything around. Um, but you also don't want, this is even probably a bit more than they'd like, so probably going to lift this up near the top where it's not going to affect things as much. Maybe put a rock beneath it or something. Alright, well, that's it this time for sure. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thanks.